Mulwini nonke um let me come and go land thank you. I'm a bit nervous standing in front of you today. Um but I'm really honored to be here among all of you beautiful black women, most importantly. Um I'll just take off this mic. So um this day is a day that holds a lot of good sentiments around it but for me it also holds very suffocating connotations about the state of womanhood um, in this present political dispensation that we find ourselves in over the years and with the older i've become it's been quite a journey of navigating the society that is constantly evolving at a rapid race at a rapid pace and where patriarchy finds means to reinvent itself reinvent itself as a black woman in South Africa, confronted with all the realizations of what it means to be in this country with each day presenting itself with new challenges that I must overcome as a woman just to feel alive, just to be alive, has been an extreme sport that I was never ready for. I'm 23 years old, I'm unemployed and attempting self-employment. I currently single-handedly run my own NPO, non-for-profit non organization called Archive Amabaliwetu, which essentially is focused on creating platforms of engagement and expression on issues concerning gender-based violence and broader social injustice in South Africa. I want to do this by facilitating processes that archive and document our plight as women living in this country, as black African women, as queer people, meaning the broader LGBTQI community, as gender non-conforming people, as socially, as socially and economically disadvantaged people who continue to feel the brunt of exclusion and the violation of our human and constitutional rights. I'm one of many women who have been failed by our institutions of governance, governance, by institutions of justice, and further failed by the very people who are responsible at the highest level of education for our safety on our university campuses. In 2016, a movement called hashtag Are You Reference List broke out at Rhodes University, aimed at addressing what we believed and experienced to be a perpetual rape culture crisis. This movement led by women and queer students called for systemic changes to be implemented as a response and further preventative measure to the sexual violence and gender-based violence that we were experiencing and navigating through as students on campus. Something so pervasive and also so subtle that it had become part of the norm of being a student to maneuver an institution knowing that the mechanisms that they had in place did not protect me as a woman. Um, and more often than not failed the victims and survivors of abuse than they did protect and attain justice for us. That the environment we spent most of our times when our parents sent us to school as students was a potential threat to, to, to the livelihood and well-being of just being a woman on campus. Rhodes University, like many of our tertiary institutions across this country, is a microcosm of the, of the country's state. Being a student at Rhodes University felt like a direct confrontation of what it is like experiencing life now on the outside as an adult, outside of a tight-knit community like a university or a college, navigating life in this big world engulfed by violence directed at our bodies. This is where I experienced the magnitude of institutional power, institutional culture, which right at the core was centered and built on patriarchal and mis misogynistic values that generally put the interests of men, of monopoly and capital ahead of everyone else and surrounding environments. I was raped in my first five months as a student in 2015 at Rhodes, so that also speaks to the pervasiveness of this culture. The, you know, the, that movement, the Ari references protests, and spoke, um, which called the rapists by name, where we demanded them to be arrested and for swift action to be taken by the university in ensuring that our campus was safe and most importantly free from violence, ultimately saw not only how men strengthened their allyship for each other, but how they, f they would fight tooth and nail to protect their most treasured valuables, which include property, their reputation, as well as the socioeconomic socio-political and economic currency attached to it all. We saw this also through the, the response that the state and the universities together gave to the Fees Must Fall um, movement. The violence against our bodies was ignored and in fact further perpetuated by the system upholding how things are done. These systems tell us how to be a woman, what we must endure and, what we can, and when we can, can say no. 
In, 2000 and, in 2017, I was then excluded from Rhodes University. I was seen as an instigator, as a leader of these protests, and given a lifetime exclusion from tertiary education, and subsequently had my degree taken away from me for being involved in those rape culture protests. Those protests not only um, took the nation by a storm, but they put microscopic attention to what was already an ongoing fight for the realization of our rights as women in South Africa, for our being and the ampli amplification of our voices on the issues that concern us the most. I stand here today as an example of what it looks like being on the receiving end of some of the consequences that come with holding systemic violence accountable, of demanding the right to safety and freedom as a woman, and to not have any of my experiences as a woman, and, to, and not have my experiences as a woman going through this country um, disregarded solely because I'm a woman. We see more of this through the gender wage gap, where even in South Africa right now, men earn over 28% more than women, where in spaces of leadership and governance, women have to, be, to get naked in order to just be considered for a position at the table, where even when you are at the table with the men who have historically ensured, you at, um, have historically ensured our exclusion as women, we still have to speak at the top of our voices just to be heard, where right now, during the COVID-19 and the lockdown, we are the ones bearing the brunt of economic exclusion. We are the ones who are left heading many of these fatherless households and will have to scrape even 10 times deeper just to get by. I want us to remember that many of the challenges we go, to, go through as black women, as young black women, are not by chance and that they are carefully designed in ensuring that we remain at the bottom of this ecosystem. It cannot be that in 2020, it cannot be that in 2020 we are fighting for the recognition of our human rights. It cannot be that in 2020 we still have to convince the courts in ensuring that our perpetrators are kept far away from us and that we deserve to be free from violence and life-threatening situations. It cannot be that in this year in South Africa, majority of the country's population, which is women, are yet the ones who are most neglected. We are not Uhuru, not until we have the land and eco economic power in our hands. And I want us to be reminded that we must continue to disrupt the patriarchy and hold the violence accountable in all the spaces we occupy. I think if anything, in the words of our Miss Universals, or Zibin Tunzi, which have stuck with me this entire year, that we continue to be reminded to take up as much space as possible and as much space that we deserve. Let us continue to fight and raise our voices and to stand up against toxic masculinity in the honor of the women who have died at the hands of this violence, in honor of ourselves who have survived and continue to survive through it all, and for the generations of women to come after us, for them not to go through a perpetual state of insecurity, powerlessness, and all-round abuse. Thank you.